Hey folks, last time on the channel I posted on the YouTube channel how CX Patcher was updated to support GPTK 1.1 and I just wanted to make a follow-up video talking about this compared to Whiskey. Um, so everything's still the same from the previous video. Uh, I actually am using the video to kind of showcase what the install steps are on crossovers. You simply get the latest CX patcher and use crossovers and you select in the app and it patches. And of course, make sure that when you do this, actually that the advanced options happens before the patch. So you want to configure these advanced options before actually patching it. And in that video, I showcased um, primarily the difference of crossovers with the CX Patcher running 1.0 versus CX Patcher of crossovers 23.6 running 1.1 and tweaked a little bit actually some settings compared to what it was um, with some FSR adjustments. So primarily I was showcasing uh, like M-Sync changes, FSR changes to Spider-Man, stuff of that nature, in which case you see the better performance on the one on the left, which is 1.1 and of course um, indicated by the text on screen. So what I intend to inform you on this video is simply just how simple it is that Whiskey is. So once you download this software, you have your bottle installed, similar to crossovers, which is Steam. If you needed to update to the latest GPTK, this actually happens once you load Whiskey and it tells you that a new version is updated. You simply hit update. Um, and it installs the latest version of GPTK. And this will always happen actually for anything um, that Apple updates and releases because this software actually connects directly to the Apple repository and checks for that setting. So something to keep in mind, whereas if you're on the CX Patcher, you will have to constantly wait until CX Patcher gets updated yeah, and then okay use CX Patcher to patch crossovers. So now just comparing all three together, obviously I would say whatever you're using to just always use the latest. So with, if you're on crossovers, six patches is available, you can test it out and I was able to get better performance. And then comparing Whiskey GPTK to CX Patcher 23.6, I guess I would state that there wasn't too much difference in my opinion from the play styles or FPS um, that just solely came from the performance benefits of GPTK 1.1, which just basically means that I know there's people arguing for using crossovers or whiskey. Crossovers does support wine and they help with the development of it. But a lot of times um, you may find that it's just better performance or the same performance if you just used what Apple provides from wine. So that's the argument that you could make if you want to save a couple bucks. Um, crossovers is a year over year um, subscription. so. Feel free to just utilize whiskeys, and as Apple keeps updating GPTK, you will expect better performance um, year over year. Whereas crossovers has development and tweaks to specific games such as Fallout 4 or Cross uh, Counter Strike. Let me know which one you guys are using, if you're using whiskeys or crossovers, or which one you prefer. I think you'll have an enjoyable experience on either either platform and for the off chance that the specific game you are using needs specific patches then that would be the chance to consider crossovers um i will say that you know deciding between the two you need cx patcher to run gptk um, because crossovers runs on a different development cycle than apple um, whereas with whiskey it's going to be automatic through launch so that's just something to consider between. I think that Whiskey has good enough performance, which is, I mean, basically Whiskey is just a wrapper of GPTK to make it very so easy cool. to install. So I think that's just the better option for most people right who are just getting into this. Um, crossovers is pretty simple to install as well, but again, you know, you have to wait for the development. Some people are asking like, oh, how do I get into the beta? Stuff like that. Um, and CX Patcher, the person who develops that, doesn't actually patch for the beta. So just something to consider and let me know your thoughts and i'll see you guys in some of the next videos also be sure to check out my uh non-gaming review of the m3 pro which is the previous video posted and should be linked on the screen right now peace